unit of inventory that we sold. So let's record all that starting with this one. I'll make it green so we can see what in the world is happening around here. Let's actually uh, make it full screen so, it's, so I can put more stuff here. So I'm going to go then to the AR up top. R, and this is going to be equal to the 188.56. So accounts receivable first time it's impacted as opposed to the other method, which would already have that negative 50 in it. And then the income is happening here. 175 is going up in the credit direction. And then the sales are going to be, I'm sorry, the sales tax is going to be here. That's a liability. So there we have that. And then invent our cost of goods sold is going to go up. So that's an expense. It's going up in the debit direction. So the effect on net income is 175 minus 75. And then the inventory, which was at 100, because this is the only thing we recorded in it, is now going back down by the hundo. And so there, so there we have it. All right, uh, let's go back on over and see if that is what happens over here. Let's save it and close it, and then we'll check it out. Save it and close it. This customer has available credits. I should have applied the credits first, but if I don't do that, notice what it does here. It says, do you want to apply the credit out? Would you like to apply the credit? I'm going to say yes. Now it's pulling in this credit in a similar fashion as we saw when we had the negative receivable. So the process looks much the same from an internal bookkeeping standpoint. Once you apply any available prepayment credits to this invoice, you won't be able to make any changes. Now that, uh, well, so that's okay. We could delete the invoice possibly if we had to and then do it again that way possibly, but we're going to say, okay. And so then it recorded it. If I go back into that invoice, you can see now it applied that $50 payment. Now, the other way we could have done that is we could have said, apply the credit up top before we said uh, save and close. And I believe we could have applied the credit in the same fashion as we as we did before. So similar process as the negative receivable, uh, but but now it's properly tying out to that unearned revenue account. So this is the 138.56 that is still owed at this point. Notice up top, I'm at 188.56 because I need to do another step here. What's the next step I need to do? I also need to say, as I recorded this invoice, I'm going to reduce the the uh, customer deposit needs to go down. Customer deposit needs to go down, man. You need to go down. You're going down. Customer deposit. And then the other side is going to go into the accounts receivable for the $50. And so now I'm going to say, all right, customer deposit goes down. I'm going to double click on it. It's going to go down with a debit. Boom. So it's back down to zero. And so we're back at the normal. And then this one, uh, AR, is, is going to go down. And so now it's at 138.56, right? So there's our 138.56 on the invoice. This $50 is just a reporting thing. It doesn't change the actual transaction we saw with the invoice uh, that would be recorded for the invoice, right? So I'm going to say, save it and close it. So in other words, if I, if I look at the transaction that was recorded balance sheet, we're going to say that what happened? K Paso, what happened? The accounts receivable goes up by that 188.56, the full amount of the invoice. Notice it's not going up by only the 138.56. It's going up by the full amount. This is just an informational thing down here because that 50 has already been recorded. So I'm going to close that out. The other side's going to the P and L, profit and loss. And so there's the 175 that got recorded there. That looks good. The sales tax payable back on the balance sheet, back to balance sheet is going to the sales tax payable right there. And so there we have that invoice here. And then we have the, the inventory side of things. Inventory is going down, dude. Dishes are done, dude inventory at where did that what are you talking about with dishes i don't know it's got a lot of d's so it sounds cool dishes are done dude whatever so then we've got the inventory went down closing that out and then on the profit and loss we've got the 100 cost of goods sold down here you can see the impact on net income 175 minus 100 it's the same as the other scenarios this one we didn't 
complete that scenario because it was a subscription model and we're back to the same point that we were at uh, with the equivalent model, which was like the second one that we did here. And then on the balance sheet, if we look at our, our accounts receivable subledger on the customer center, no, not in the customer, in the customer balance detail, uh, notice our, and here all I have is uh, an invoice and then we have this journal entry. Now that's a new thing, right? Because we had to have this journal entry to pull to pull in the fact that we had the unearned revenue. So that's just like basically this journal entry that I made down here. Now notice, so that's another thing that's kind of weird because usually, and it's something that again, it's not as, as, as nice as the negative receivable from a bookkeeping standpoint, although not a customer center, now I've got these two journal entries down here. That's kind of weird. It's kind of ugly. It's kind of messy because in the last one, when I did it this way with a negative receivable, I don't have that, right? So from an internal bookkeeping standpoint, it's kind of ugly to see these journal entries, but you know, it's not the, not the biggest deal. Also, if I go to my lists drop down and I go to my chart of accounts and I look at my inactive accounts here, uh, they have, uh, a, an account for prepayment transfer. So let's go. So this is, they made it inactive. So you don't post stuff to it accidentally, but we still have this added account and these journal entries, which give potential for people to mess things up. Right now you could also say, well, why do they even use